Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing a little bit of a start of our overwinter in uh, beginning the cacti vlogs. And I'm going to start off with today with the cactus seedlings that we've got in the polytunnel. And um, we have a lot of cactus seedlings here in the, the grow room and um, lots of different very small ones all on the go. Some epiphytic seedlings as well. But these obviously have been here all over the uh, the spring and summer i'm going to be staying here then all for the winter and um, we've got larger cactus seedlings in the polyton i'm going to be staying there but we have a few that are sort of in between stages that that well, did really well in the spring and summer when we had them out there but now it's sort of getting later into the autumn now getting close to november the temperatures are dropping quite a lot in the polyton and it's time to bring a lot of the seedlings in so this is obviously my uh, my grow room here and I've got a lot of space that I've made to bring in a lot of the plants when we have to bring them into overwinter. The more mature ones that are not so cold hardy will be going onto these trays here. But I've got this tray here with the, the Mars Hydro Grow Light that are going to be bringing in the seedlings that are not that uh, cold hardy to overwinter here for the winter. And as I say, our polytunnel we heat at a minimum temperature of 5C, which is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, we, some of the seedlings are, are still a bit too young to overwinter at that temperature. So they're going to be overwintered in here. So this is just a bit of a video vlog, starting off to bring in the seedlings. And then over the next few days, I'm going to be sharing all the other cacti we're going to be bringing in from the polytunnel that aren't going to stay in the polytunnel. As I say, we're going to keep many still in there, but the ones that do need a sort of a mini minimum temperature about 10 c 50 degree fahrenheit we're going to have to bring in so there we go that's a bit of the space here we've got the grow light already there the mars hydro we have the um, spider farmer and the the um, mars hydro sp150 also that we have for a lot of our other cacti in this in this grow room here do really well under it so uh, here we go then that's the space done i'm going to show you what we've got in the polytunnel at seedling wise that we're going to be bringing in now here is the polytunnel as you can see, we have a lot of cacti and succulents, hanging baskets and everything all in here. And the majority of these will actually be staying in here for the winter. We do have a heater there, as you can see, and we, we have it set on so when the temperature drops to 5 Celsius, 41 degree Fahrenheit or below, it automatically kicks on. So these plants never, ever get any very cold temperatures but obviously we do have plants in here such as euphorbias all of these here and some of our, our seedlings are a little bit more delicate that will need a minimum temperature of about 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit and because it would cost a fortune to keep this polytunnel heated all the time all through the winter at that we have to bring some plants into over winter and over probably the next week or so i'm going to be putting up lots of video vlogs when we bring in the major the, the the cacti that need to come in such as the euphorbias there also some of the the hylocereus down there and also other types of cacti we've got some of these serious ones that do need a warmer temperature and um the pylocereus and other ones as well that are a bit temperamental in cold temperatures so they will need to be overwintered warmer we're going to be bringing them into the house but the majority of all of these are going to stay out here as they always do every year outside but we have some seedlings as i mentioned earlier that are a little bit more sensitive we've got plenty more seedlings here these are going to be the first year these uh, echinopsis subdenudata um, seedlings have been outside but I think they're going to be okay out here for the first winter as I say they're going to be kept they're old enough now to be kept dry and they'll certainly overwinter okay with the, the heater so they're never going to get too cold um, we've got other cactus you can see all these are going to be coming in as well and now we've got some epiphyllum seedlings here these are quite mature and we normally bring these inside to overwinter but I think they're at that stage where they're going to be okay um, they're large enough now to sort of overwinter outside. So the temperature in here never drops below five and these are going to be kept pretty dry now. Do you show there, these little seedlings are starting to form. They're little more traditionally seen epiphyllum um, leaves, as you can see, absolutely cute. Look at that one just starting to form. That's the seedlings here. <laughs> and then they start to form their more traditional leaves as they mature, so absolutely cute. But I've got to keep an eye on them because when it comes into sort of the middle of November, December, if they look like they're struggling a bit with the temperatures, then I will bring them inside, but I think they're going to be okay. And all of our other type of seedlings that we have here, the majority are okay. But we do have some that are very delicate. And um, these here is the um, 
Homula, Homula cephala texensis, um, commonly known as the horse crippler cactus. And these can take sort of a cool winter, winter rest, but because they're still young and they are very fragile type of cacti, I'm going to be bringing these into the house. Also, these three little Lophophora seedlings are very tiny, as you can see. Um, these are Lophophora texensis that um, were grown from seed that, that was given to us from our wonderful friend Clyde, Clyde Morris. So Clyde, these are little seedlings here. And Lophophora is very hardy. And as you can see, we, we keep these out all the time. They can take cold temperatures as long as they're kept cool and dry. But because these are still young seedlings, we're going to take them in because they will still need to be lightly watered over the winter. So that's why they need to come into the house. Also, we've got some Astrophytum seedlings here that are, are very um, fragile. Astrophytum as well. We've got quite a few here in our collection of different types. We're going to be bringing some of the, the smaller Astrophytums here into the house. Um, when we bring the rest of the cacti into over winter because although they can take cold temperatures they're still young and we don't want to take any chances including these ones here but the older the older astros will be absolutely fine out here as long as they're kept cool and not watered obviously and by the way guys before we go any further if you want to know i've made many many videos on overwintering cacti including last year i did a whole tips on how to know and and the minimum temperatures on overwintering cacti i'll link both of them videos at the end of this video on the end screen and also up above as well to the information little symbol um, on them videos and they'll also put the links down below in the about section of this video if you want lots of uh, advice on how to overwinter your cacti and also all about the minimum temperatures that cacti need and can survive at for your um, different types of plants you've got as I say here a lot of these plants would definitely be able to stay out if we had a climate that wasn't so damp and humid. We're in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, and it's a very high rain fall in winter, even in summer, to be honest, and the humidity is very high. We're going to be getting a dehumidifier, especially for polytunnels and greenhouses we're going to be putting in here, which is going to be great. So stay tuned for a video when we set all that up. But because of the, the humidity problem, we have to overwinter a lot of plants like these euphorbias, for example, inside the house because they're very rot prone in high humidity and cold temperatures. Same with young seedlings. These astros here, it's like the name, the, the name down, I can never remember. Astrophytum, let me just get the little label here. Astrophytum coelensiae, yep, coelensi. These are all grown from seed and they're about just under two years old. They're still very young. They're very rot prone in cold, damp conditions at this size, as are very young astros as well. So they're coming in. But these are going to be bringing in when I bring the other ones in. I'm just going to focus on the seedlings today. So they're going to be coming in as well. So what I'm going to be doing now is getting a selection of the, the young seedlings I'm going to be bringing into over winter, including, to show you here, we've got these as well, Brazil, Brazilio cacti, uh, bus. Baselaria as well, all, all seed sown. These are actually, we didn't sow these from seed, these were given to us as seedlings from our wonderful friend Shane Walsh. But they're still young and I don't want to risk them outside in the polytunnel this year. And Pelasca Chichipi as well, these were grown from seed from us and uh, beautiful little cuties there as you can see. They, the, plant, the mature plant itself always needs a, a warm over a winter in of a minimum of 10C, 50F. So the seedlings definitely need to come in. So I'm going to be getting a selection of the seedlings put together that I'm going to be bringing in and then show you what I've chosen here um, when I've got them all done. But that's pretty much all the seedlings I need to bring into over winter. As I say, we've got lots of seedlings here, a lot of Trichocereus and uh, Corypanthus under there and other types of seedlings. These are Hylocereus seedlings. They're going to have to come in as well. I'm going to bring them in when I bring in the... Uh, the dragon fruits, the other Hylocereus here, probably the next few days. And these are little Mammillaria seedlings. I was going to pot on this year, never got round to it, but they'll be okay for the winter there. They're hardy enough. And the same with these Libivias as well. These little Cleister cacti um, as well, they'll be okay to be overwintered in the polytunnel. And as I say, the little Echinopsis subdenidata, which will be fine. So they're going to be keeping all this at a minimum of 5C41 degrees Fahrenheit so they should overwinter well and I'm going to just keep an eye on the epiphyllum so we have a lot of our other epiphytic cacti as you can see here that we keep in the polyton they overwinter very well here um, all through the winter they seem to do pretty much okay but this is going to be the first year for these so we'll I'll just see how they go if I have to bring them in I will do but I'll just keep an eye on them 
So there we go. That's all I have to really bring in. And then I'm going to show you what they look like when they're all put away. Now, these little cuties, before I put them away upstairs in the grow room, I'm just going to show you a little bit how amazing it is. I sew everything all at the same time and how they all grow at different rates. These are all Astrophytum coheliensi um, variety turd duh. I'll put the proper name going across the bottom because I'm hopeless at pronouncing them. And I sewed these in, I think it was 2018, yeah, 2018 in the February, seed from the British Cactus and Succulent Society. But look how large this one is, and look how small all the other ones are. It's crazy. But uh, these, I say, are going to be overwintered in the grow room. And I've got some more other small astrophytums as well. They're that little bit too young to be left in the polytunnel. So I'm going to bring them in over the next few days. And I'll probably keep all the astrophytums all together. And this one here is Homolocephala texensis, commonly known as the horse crippler cactus. Again, all different um, in how they look there. These are Pelasca chichipi, sown in 2019. They're more or less sort of a few different sizes. And uh, they say these are seeds that we didn't sow ourselves, but seedlings given to us by our wonderful friend Shane Walsh, who also lives here in Ireland. And these little offer for uh, Texensis are seedlings from a uh, seed that was gifted to us from Clyde Morris. But look at them. Aren't they cute? They're so tiny, way too small to be left in the polytunnel as, as these young seedlings still need to be lightly watered and I don't want to be doing that if the temperatures kept cool in the in the polytunnel. This is a Ripsalis that was sown in 2016 from seed and uh, look at that so that's coming in with the other Ripsalis upstairs as well. That's a little bit about them and um, what I'm going to be doing now is putting a bit of pumice just around these to top dress them to finish them off to keep them looking nice and I'm going to rewrite some labels out, small labels for these four here. By the way guys, I meant to say if you want to know how to grow cactus from seed then do check out a video I have made on how to grow cactus from seed. Links will be up above and also down below in the video description. Now that's the little Four little astrophytums all put away here. They're under the, um, the spider farmer grow light, which is really, really good. And also close to a south facing window. So they get plenty of sun naturally when we get the sunny days. So they're put, a, they're put away there in their winter quarters with some of our new Lophophoras that we've got recently. And um, I'll just show you, we've also got other little Lophophora baby seedlings as well growing there. That's we've kept in all through the, um, through the summer too. And then we've got the other, the Pelasquia chichipis there and the Brasilio, Brasilia, Brasilio, Brasilio, Brasilio cactus, I put the names down below, Basilaria, a variety Stellara, Stellara. We've got them here also under the, um, the Spider Farmer Grow Light, which is amazing, guys. And then the little Ripsalis that grow from seed is here with all the other type of epiphytic type of cacti as well and some of the orchids there and we've still got all this space left so when we bring in other plants to overwinter we've got plenty of room there and we're going to be making another grow room downstairs also and putting up lights in there to overwinter some of the other cacti in so that's going to be another video where we do that set it all up also so stay tuned probably for tomorrow's video when i bring in some of the other small cacti um some of the astrophytum ones that we're going to need to bring in the smaller ones and also some of the other type of small cacti too. And if you want to know how, you know, what plants to need minimum and maximum temperatures and everything for the winter, then do check out how to overwinter cacti sucklers video and my tips on overwintering cacti as well. And we've got the little Homolocephala texensis, commonly known as a horse crippler cacti here as well under the um, under the spider farmer grow light. So they're going to overwinter really well there. And if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and suckers, then please check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. Just want to show you some of my other little seedlings. They're all doing really well in there too. I don't want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.